welcome to the court. Uh, the judges say the truth. Today we're reading uh, from an article by Darren Walker. It's called Real, Real Equality. Real Equality. Um, how companies can show they really value black lives. Um, and it starts out like this. Since protesters over the killing of George Floyd have been erupting across the U.S., I've received numerous calls from corporate CEOs who wouldn't want to know what they could do and where they can quickly donate $10 million to advance the cause of racial justice. This, the first thing I do is remind them of Martin Luther King Jr.'s caution that philanthropy must not be used to obscure the economic injustices that make it necessary. The frustration and rage we're seeing across the country aren't just about racist system of policy, policing, they're also about original sins, a genocide of Native Americans and enslavement of black Africans whose stolen land and labor built this country's wealth. It's about the predations of modern day capitalism that have allowed a privileged few to hoard the lion's share of the nation's uh, wealth. This time, the usual corporate playbook isn't going to work. Here are eight things very uh, every corporate leader needs to uh, understand and improve for making li black lives better. Uh, number one, remake your C-suit. C-suite, excuse me. Change uh, starts at the top. Do you have a black board member? Black executives in your leadership team? If you do, are they token appointments or do they have real power to make recommendation and changes that could or would make your company more racially equitable? Number two, hire and advance more black people. You have the power to transform black lives immediately simply by hiring and promoting more of us. Tell your managers that they cannot go forward with a hire or a promotion at any level unless the candidate pool is racially diverse. Hmm. Number three, get involved in the Fair Chance Hiring Initiative. One legacy of the tough on crime era is that about one third of U.S. adults now have a criminal record, mostly for minor crimes that nonetheless hamper their ability to get a job. That's why the Society for Human Resource Management has urged employers to take a um, getting talent back to the work pledge as part of the Fair Chance Hiring Initiative by employing qualified job applicants with crimes in their past. Okay. As noted, uh, many of them could be quite small and a long time ago. Pay, uh, number four, is pay your employees a living wage. The federal minimum wage is $2.13 per hour for tipped workers and $7.25 per hour for others. This is not a living wage. From 2012 to 2014, nearly half of government public assistance went to people who worked full-time but still fell below the federal poverty line. Black workers make up about 11% of the workforce, but 38% of black workers who now work for the minimum wage would get a raise under such a situation. Uh, commit to paying your workers a living wage of at least $15 per hour and more in higher cost parts of the country. Sounds good. Number five, provide a safe and healthy workplace. Lack of adequate health insurance coverage is a big reason. Uh, black, Latinx, and Native American people have contracted the coronavirus at a disproportionately higher rate than white Americans. Um, does your company manipulate the schedule of your workers to fall just below the threshold for health coverage? Does it label people independent contractors even if they spend the bulk of their wages working for you? Yep. Good, good suggestions. Number six. Provide paid sick and family leave. Black workers can often cannot afford to take time off to care for a newborn or a sick family member. The lack of paid sick leave is another reason so many people of color have suffered higher rates of illness and death from COVID-19. The pandemic should have, provide, have proved that paid leave is a moral issue in this country. Number seven. Advocate for a more progressive tax code. Standing for black lives means investing in the essential building blocks of social equality. From adequately funding schools,
through universal health care and affordable housing. These things require government action at a scale. What we really need is a progressive tax code that will address these problems. Yep. Number eight. <coughs> um, advocate for shareholder reforms. I hear you saying I have public shareholders to whom I'm accountable. Supporting tax policies that work against my company's bottom line will only drive down our share price. Yes, and this is why the current model of shareholder driven capitalism that puts quarterly profits over people is bad for the long-term social and economic health of this country. This is very clearly written. And Walker is the president of the Ford Foundation, by the way. Um, so I'll summarize what he said because they're good, not just for black, Latinx, and uh, Native Americans, but for everybody. Okay, number one, we make your C-suite. Change starts at the top. Do you have any board members who are black or Latinx? Do you have diversified people at the top of your company? Number two, hire and advance more black people. Do you have the power to transform uh, lives and promote people up the chain? Please take uh, advantage of the opportunity to do it. Number three, get involved in the Fair Chance Hiring Initiative. Yes, one third of adults in America have some sort of criminal record. Thank you for throwing all that money at policing for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, but we need some uh, opportunities to get out of this uh, bad cycle we've been in. And please hire uh, people who have uh, had bad records and give them a chance. Find out how to do it and do it right. Number four, pay your employee a living wage. Again, this particular one could affect all Americans. A lot of Americans, not just black, Latinx, and I, um, Native Americans are not getting paid good wages, but most of Americans are not getting paid good wages. Um, I, I'm not kidding, most of them. So the minimum wage of seven twenty-five an hour is not a living wage by any means, and many people have to have this. And 2013 hour for tipped work? That's crazy. Give people some security. We need to do this, especially after what we've seen with COVID-19. Number five, provide a safe and healthy workplace. Okay, uh, make sure everybody's insured. If you don't have insurance, you need to demand that the whole country have insurance. Okay, support that. Uh, number six, provide paid sick and family leave. Uh, people need time off for their families. They need some help. Please provide what it takes to have a livable wage and a livable, socially sound and economically sound America. Number seven, advocate for a more progressive tax code, okay? A more progressive tax is obviously needed in a situation where the people at the top aren't paying their fair share, and we need all that money to transform the messy America that we've uh, been facing the last few years. Uh, number eight, advocate for shareholder reforms. Yeah, make sure that shareholders needing a quarterly profit or something isn't driving your bottom line. Make sure the uh, you have a sustainable company, sustainable in the sense that it supports a sustainable community. And that means you can't be throwing money to the uh, everybody left and right and not investing in your community and in your company for the long term, for the health of the people in the company, for uh, fan, uh, time off for family needs and as uh, those things arrive, especially in the wake of COVID. We need to have a socially sound uh, political economy. Support it now. All right, thank you, uh, Darren Walker, for that. He's from Ford Foundation, and I suggest you uh, read this article yourself. It came through uh, Time Magazine uh, just on November 2nd through 9th, this edition. I hope you liked it, and uh, you have a good day. Please subscribe.